Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. You know, the sports books have made this rematch between Lyndon Arthur, the guy with the best jab in the light heavyweight division, versus the man he beat in the first fight, Anthony Yard. But let's take a crack at it. First remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now one of the things that happens repeatedly in boxing is you come across a fighter who is just so talented. So talented but so clueless that you almost feel parental toward him. Right? You look at the guy and you're just thinking, wow, how could a guy with this much talent be this confused about the basics? I know I'm sounding hard. Look, let's just call it as it is. There are times in the ring where Anthony Yard has no idea what he's doing. Right? Anthony Yard is the guy who is fighting a jabber. Whether it's then champion Sergei Kovalev or whether it's Lyndon Arthur. And he will get hit with the jab repeatedly. Right? From the opening bell. Almost doesn't look like he knew his opponent was a jabber. Right? He looks confused. You know the way some fighters intuitively know where they are in a round. You saw it recently at the end of round 12 of the Usyk Joshua fight. Right? Usyk knew when 30 seconds were left in the last round and Usyk opened up the gun, didn't he? Started battering Anthony Joshua. Wanted to make sure that he was going to make a statement in the closing moments of that fight. You might remember Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler. Right? Hagler wins the first two and a half minutes of a round. Then Ray Leonard would take over. <laughs> Ray wanted to make sure that the judges saw him throwing combinations at the end of the round. Right? He would do things to steal the round. Well, in my opinion, Anthony Yard is the opposite. You're watching Anthony Yard and you wonder whether someone told Anthony Yard that the rounds are three minutes long. Right? Yard has to be one of the worst in the sport. One of the worst in the sport at figuring out where he is in the round. Right? But Yard is one of the most gifted punchers in the sport. With both hands. If he hits you flush, the world changes. So in the first fight, we're learning now from Lyndon Arthur that Anthony Yard hurt him to the body. Now this is boxing. Guys don't want to look hurt. Right? So a guy will get hit with a shot, will privately think to himself, what the hell was that? But the guy, of course, looks cool, calm, and collected. Right? You didn't hurt me even as he's wondering, is my rib broken? Right? You know, wow, is my jaw broken? Well, we're finding out that Lyndon Arthur was badly hurt that first fight, off a body shot. Of course, it never crossed Anthony Yard's mind that he may have hurt Lyndon Arthur, even though Anthony Yard, again, is a gifted puncher. Right? These guys are fighting at light heavyweight. Understand, I believe Anthony Yard has the kind of punch that could carry to cruiserweight. So, here's why I'm taking a flawed Anthony Yard in the rematch. Right? It's because Lyndon Arthur has a spectacular plan A. His jab is the best in the division. 
right? It's an elite jab. But this is the rematch, right? Anthony Yard should know all about Lyndon Arthur at this point. I don't think Lyndon Arthur has enough of a plan B to surprise Anthony Yard in this rematch. I don't think Lyndon Arthur has enough of a right hand to change up the strategy. Right? Lyndon Arthur's jab is an in-the-pocket jab. It's not what I call a mobile jab. I know we both call them jabs, but they're different, right? A guy like a Tyson Fury or an Ali who's on the move, who has you trying to find them. In other words, you're already vulnerable because you're moving. Think Sonny Liston in the Ali rematch, right? The Phantom Punch fight. You're moving trying to cut off the ring on the guy. And then the guy, while he's on the move, can just pop you. Right? That that jab that he's throwing right, leads you into a right hand. Because you're moving, you're not set up. Your feet aren't right. You get hit at the wrong time, you can get hurt, you can get dropped. Let me also say too, Larry Holmes had a great jab, like Lyndon Arthur, but his was a mobile jab, right? He's in the pocket with it, but when he gets dropped by Ernie Shavers in the rematch, look up the fight. Larry does not know where he is. He's in against one of the most murderous punchers of the 1970s. Shavers comes forward ready to close the show. Let's remember, Shavers stops Kenny Norton in something like the first or second round. Right? Shavers knew how to stop you early. Shavers comes after Larry. Larry starts dancing. Starts moving around the ring. And of course, Larry still had the stick. He still has the jab. Ernie Shavers wasn't able to take the title. He couldn't find a hurt Larry Holmes. Now here, Lyndon Arthur just doesn't have those legs. I don't think Lyndon Arthur can show up and decide, hey, I'm going to force Anthony Yard to move his feet. I don't believe Lyndon Arthur is that guy. I believe Lyndon Arthur is more the guy who is a Dylan White type. Right? Without the offhand Dylan White has. In other words, in the pocket, Lyndon Arthur has a spectacular jab. He'll hurt you with it. But he's not going to move around. And if Anthony Yard has the kind of learning curve I believe he should have, as confused and lost as he is, if Anthony Yard just figures out how to time the jab, figures out how to either be too far outside for the jab to hit him or how to move his upper body out of the way of the jab to duck under it like a Mike Tyson. Right? Just come inside or even to come inside and eat some jabs understanding that Lyndon Arthur doesn't have his power. That his shots are big shots. Right? Come in, move your head a little bit so you don't get hit flush with the jab, then start trading. If Anthony Yard could also realize that rounds are three minutes long, and if you hurt a guy early in the three minute segment, you might be able to stop him in the round. And if you've hardly thrown anything for two and a half minutes, Maybe you want to start throwing stuff in the last 30 seconds to give yourself a chance to win the round. If Yard could just figure out pacing and have a strategy to diminish Lyndon Arthur's jab, he doesn't have to stop it. I understand that's hard to do. 
right? Larry Holmes' jab was going to be an issue, right? Lyndon Arthur's jab is going to be an issue. But Yard's the bigger puncher. He's two-handed. Right? I get the feeling since there's more variance to Yard's game than there is Lyndon Arthur's game, it's Yard who should have the advantage in the rematch. Right? So I'm taking Anthony Yard in the rematch. Here's how I'm going to structure the bet, given the odds. I'm going to take Yard by stoppage, folks. Right? Yard by stoppage. And I'm going to hedge the play with the over. I believe Lyndon Arthur's only way to win this fight is by decision. I know Yard got stopped by Kovalev, but Kovalev's a lot harder puncher than Lyndon Arthur. I believe Arthur's only way to win this fight is by stoppage. If I have the over, I have both guys by decision. If I have yard by stoppage, and understand, you should get long odds on that. Because these two guys have already fought and neither guy got stopped. Right? Yard by stoppage should give you significantly better odds than yard simply to win the fight. I think yard has the upper hand. If I had one bet to make, it would be simply yard to win. But let's get a bit creative so we can have a built-in hedge in case the fight does go the distance, at which point I would expect Lyndon Arthur to get the decision absent him getting knocked down multiple times in the fight. So I like Anthony Yard in this one. I'm expecting Yard to be a lot more aware of Lyndon Arthur's jab. Right? The problem with having and relying upon a great plan A is that opponents can then prepare for it. Right? Let me also say too, the problem with having this good, this good a jab, is that for some fighters, they then start to ignore the other parts of the game. You notice Deontay Wilder, excellent straight right hand. That's an A-plus punch, right? That can drop a guy who's completely conscious with just one punch, right? But you notice, Wilder, even today, after a great fight, great third fight with Tyson Fury, right? When Fury got inside, Wilder didn't really have that inside game, right? Wilder didn't really have the developed left hand, everything had to operate off his straight right hand. Right? I believe Lyndon Arthur has the same problem. I think his A game is just too spectacular. Right? I'm not sure, and I could be proven wrong. Maybe he kind of like doesn't show things he doesn't have to show when he's in against an opponent who has fallen into his A-game trap, right? But I haven't seen enough Lyndon Arthur right hands. I haven't seen enough Lyndon Arthur movement for me to believe that Lyndon Arthur has a plan B, a plan C, a plan D to surprise Anthony Yard. When you're fighting a blessed puncher and he already knows what you have, I believe that spells trouble, especially when the guy hurts you in the first fight and this rematch is in Anthony Yard's backyard. I expect Anthony Yard to win this fight. I'm taking Yard by stoppage. I'm going to hedge the play with the over, right? Understand, too, what that means. When you have yard by stoppage, you have him by stoppage in every round. So if this fight makes it into the later rounds and yard's able to get a stoppage in the later rounds, you win both halves of the bet. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Understand, too, what I'm suggesting here. Lyndon Arthur is unbeaten. 
and I'm suggesting he loses this fight to a guy he's already beaten. Right? Understand the risk involved. You could lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.